Terry's Bartley. Not according to your mate Bartlett. He's your best mate you grew up with. Bartlett is not my best mate. Yes, he is. You grew up with him. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> you and Kev Hewitt. Kev Hewitt taught you all to fish. That's true. I've seen it on that podcast. He taught you all to fish. And then, um, and then you all grew up together. And then Bartlett got your job with Simo, and then you annoyed Simo so much that he, 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 has, now he wants to shoot you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Lee, sorry about to let you know that about your dad. That's a true story. You can't tell me that's not true. Is that true? Nearly all that's true. And pretty much your life is your life is down to Bart. Yes, it is. Of course it is. How is it? Because he brought you up. He did bring you up. Well, I'm only saying what he said. How's it going? He he told me. That, Hello, Rich. Just talking about how Bartlett's basically uh, Moz's dad. <laughs> She's weird. It's like it's what you'd call a wafter. Wafter. A uh, wafter. Uh, wafter. Wafter. First rod's just gone out. About to put the second rod out got two options on uh, today because I've not been here before so don't know the venue at all anything about it nothing so the first thing I'm going to do is stay mobile I've got two rods float fishing them both and I'm basically going to float ledger them back in but off the bottom it's really clear water from what I can tell shallow margins going to give them a good dose of the clear DNA apex spray okay first of all because it's so clear here visually that I don't think I need to put the red um, or the yellow one so first of all I'm going to go au naturel and uh, what I'm going to do is try and spend half an hour in each swim, casting it out, twitch it back, twitch it back, pick up the other one, twitch it back, twitch it back, do it away until I get into the margins. A couple of times in each swim, like I say, half an hour, next one, next one, next one, because I'm basically throwing as many darts at the dartboard as I, at, as I can. Sooner or later, I should hit the bullseye. If I was just to turn up here, think this looks okay, stick out three rods on alarms, all my eggs are in one basket. And I'm not about that. I'm about trying to work for the fish and seeing if we can cover the ground and seeing if we can nick one. And hopefully, with the sinking jaw and the wobbling, all those amino acids coming out the, out the bait spray out the back, there should be plenty of scent coming out of two rods working them fairly continuously. So get this other rod out, fingers crossed, we can get a take. Got you then, that would have been brilliant. Oh, the camera gone in the lot. <laughs> I'm sure if there's any pike in here, we will pick up one or two in a bit. Okay, quick half hour in, the, in this swim as said. Casting them both out, bringing them back in, kind of nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock as you look out at the swim, and then just slowly covering the water. It's a little bit milder today after it's been freezing cold. I'm on the back of the wind. Maybe as we get round the lake, the silvers might be on the end of the wing where it's a little bit warmer, but until we keep trying everywhere, we're not going to know where they are. So, on to the next spot. So we've just come down to the, uh, we've been off the back of the wind where it was totally flat. So the only movement I could put into the uh, floats was actually me putting movement into the float. So worked our way around a few swims. Haven't seen any sign of life yet. And now we've got down to the side where there's a bit of um, side wind coming in. So what I can do now is put the boats out, let get a, get a bow in the braid and then just slowly let the bait slowly move through the swims. And obviously I've sprayed them up. I've actually put a bit of red on one of them now to make it a little bit more visual on a smelt. And then I've got a natural bait out there, which has got the clear on it. And uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens. Let them slowly drift through the swim and then I'll put them through and then I'll work them through the swim a little bit more erratic and then onto the next swim.
Okay, oh, look at that there. It's gone. Okay, so that fish is just running away from me. I'm just going to set the hooks. There we go. And we've got a fish on. That was on the uh, on the natural bait there, sprayed with the clear. Oh, there we go. Got a little jump up. Here it comes. Oh, lovely. So we got one in the net. Perfect. So um, definitely having that mobile approach. We switched lakes as well. So we got down to the bottom end of the uh, wind. We didn't carry on doing the other half of the lake. Instead, we switched over to this lake here. What happened as we were down the bottom end, uh, we saw grebe up this top end of the lake. Uh, we spoke to the fishery uh, manager here and he said it's a little bit deeper up there as well. So we had a bit of depth. Potentially at this time of year, it could have meant silver fish around here. So on the natural bait, which you would think would be up here, um, we fished out, twitching it back, twitching it back, letting it sit for five minutes, twitching it back, and then sailed away. We've got a lovely little gravel pit pike in there, which looks beautiful. So we'll get that one out and have a look in a minute. And that was on the, uh, rather than putting any color on that bait like I did on the other rod, that's uh, on the clear spray, and that's on the natural, uh, natural apex on that one there. So it definitely smelt that, and it definitely bit it. <laughs> Perfect. Here we go then, look at this little chap. Beautiful markings. Hopefully, we might have found the fish. We're going to work this area a bit longer now. So, absolutely pretty little fish there. And that was on the float fish, a uh, little float fish uh, roach bait there, which was just sprayed in the clear, natural, just to match the hatch type thing. It's not really that colour of water, so I didn't put, put the colour on it. And um, saw the grebe up here. First cast, put it out, a few twitches, and this little fella grabbed it, and away we go. See those like, you've got two side rows and then the middle row. You see all those teeth, over 400 there, and you can see they're all pointing backwards. So you know you get a hook, a fishing hook, it's got a barb on it, yeah? To stop the fish coming off. That's like 400 barbs and they're all pointing backwards. So when a fish goes in there, a roach or whatever, duckling, baby duck or whatever, it ain't coming out. And then these ones around the edges, that's just to hold it. And then it uses its tongue at the bottom to turn the bait. So it has it head first and swallows all the fish head first. Very clever. Do you know what? They haven't changed or evolved since the dinosaurs because they haven't even needed to because they're perfect hunters. Crazy when you think about it like that, isn't it? Woo! Bolted. Oh, what's it got on there? I was going to pull it off it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Don't get it on an outtake! Out. <laughs> Don't get it on an outtake. Don't get it on an outtake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have got it, haven't you? That's something. It's not. It's not smooth wood. Do you know chicken mesh? Yeah. I thought I'd be able to just edge it down off it. Do you want to walk out there, Mozilla? Explain to us what just happened. Mozilla was in my space. Okay, so we've got this lovely little little fella here. And that was on, ooh, the roach, roach dead bait. 
and that was just cast over to the area by the cage there where we saw a few fish crashing. So um, I'm going to chin this fish now, which I don't recommend until you get experienced and going with somebody who is experienced because they can show you exactly how to do it. So until you go with someone like that, um, it's best to show, no, go with someone who's experienced and can show you exactly how to do it. That's a little fellow and probably the one which was feeding on the fry over there. Covered in leeches on the bottom. All over its belly, all on its fins, it's got lots of leeches. So that just goes to show, putting that bait over there, it had the clear spray on it and it still lifted it up off the bottom. So obviously smelt that, came up and grabbed the roach. Seeing a little bit of action, using a little bit of watercraft and giving yourself a little bit of an edge has paid off. And I think that's what fishing is about giving yourself an edge and giving yourself a few percentages and that percentage is looking for the bird diving on the bait fish, looking for a fish which is chasing the bait fish in the corner, getting told by, by the, the, the chap who runs the place it's a bit deeper over here um, and then putting the amino bait spray on the bait to give your bait a bit of an edge as well. So when you add up all the little percentages, those percentages give you a little bit more of an edge in the next angler and then hopefully you catch a few more fish like this one. So I'm going to get this little one back now. The water's very, very cold. Oh, pretty sure it's not going to hang about in that nice cold water. There you go. Whoa, and it's turned around the wrong way. Here we go. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Definitely lively. Back she goes. Perfect. Now we're going to head down to another part, another lake they've got on the complex here where it's meant to be a bit deeper and um, it's meant to be a bit of a pikey area. So we're going to go and have a look at that place now. Today has been a day for roving because, like I said at the beginning, I've never been here before, I haven't got a clue about anything, wasn't told anything, don't know the depths, any contours, the biomass of the pike, how many pike are in here, um, I don't know, the, the roach shoals or anything like that. So really, it's your first time on a venue and how to kind of find out what to do on your first time you visit a venue. For me, I think being static in one swim and staying there all day is probably not the one really because you're putting, like I said, you're putting all your eggs in one basket and you're crossing your fingers that you're going to bring the pike to you. Whereas doing what I've done today, with, I've got no bank sticks, I've stayed really mobile, I've got my rucksack, I've got my net, the unhooking mat and the two rods, I can literally just leapfrog, leapfrog. And I already know where there's some deeper holes, where I've seen grebes feeding, where I've seen some kingfishers going in and out, I've seen a couple of pike strikes, so I'm already building up a bit of a mat. Whereas if I stayed in one swim all day, I probably wouldn't have started to build that knowledge of a venue. So. That's really how I would get to grips with the, a new venue to start with. And the type of rig I would use on that new venue would be a roving rig. So it's a float rig and I just, you can have different baits on here. I've got a, a little small roach on here because I'm sure there'd be shoals and shoals of uh, small roach in here. So I'm trying to match the hatch. Um, and then I've got it on a, on a little uni rig there. So the reason being is I don't want to pick up loads of debris or anything like that. I have a single front hook there. So this one's a size two. I've got a little bait saver on there and that's basically because I don't want the fish coming off on the cast. Once it hits the water it can, it can quite easily rip through so it means I can get many casts, okay? And then in the back I put the treble into the back there. But if you can see when it's under tension that fish has got a bend in it. That's really important. If I don't put a bend in it it will just kite in the water straight when I pull the float back. If I put a bend in it it will spin just like a spinner, like a spoon, like when people used to use copper spoons and silver spoons, or even just a big type of modern day lure fishing spoon. It's the equivalent to that when you put a bend in it. So it will actually spin. And then when you stop, your weight will go down and your, the, the roach will flutter. And if you do cover pike or you've got a following pike and it sees something silver spin past it. And then when it's dropping on that flutter, they absolutely love that. And they'll nail it while it's fluttering through because they know it's going down in a straight line and it's easy for them to just intercept it. And it looks like a wounded dying fish ultimately. And when they look at it, you can't really get a lure which would look any more lifelike than a dead fish. So that's the whole kind of reasoning for it. 
So that's the rig side of it there and the bait side of it. You can do many things with the, with the bait sprays, which, which I use. So this one's got the clear on it. You can use the red, you can use the orange. Now, that's a bit like if you're carp fishing and you're using different coloured pop-ups. There's certain times and certain days when different colours will make a difference. If you look at salmon anglers, for example, they quite often get the prawns and they, they spray them red. So it, it, they've done that for a reason, because it, it's a visual attraction. Red is, is, a, is a bit of a kind of strike colour for predators as well. So, you know, having that little bit of red on the front, spraying the front end of the fish red maybe, so like the traditional red head lures you get, that type of thing, it can all give you an edge on the day. And it's just about working your lure, your, your dead bait, and what colour spray would work best on each day. If we move up the trace, I've got it on a quick link there, so I can very easily just undo it and put it back on again. So if I do get a fish, I can literally just in the net, unhook this, put the rod to the side, and I'm not having to carry a net and a rod up the bank and everything like this. I can leave the rod where it is and just unhook it. Now I come to the weight, and above the weight, I've got something which you may not have seen before, okay? And that's called an up trace, because I'm doing lots and lots of casting today, and I'm casting into a headwind. And even when you're not, if you don't feather the bait down, it can go over the top of your braided main line or mono, and it can wrap round and it can catch like this on top. And then obviously it's gonna sit there and it's gonna float. And if you get a pike take, it'll take the lot. It can't discriminate between line and a lead and it doesn't know what's a safe rig and what is not a safe rig. So it's up to you to make it a safe rig. So if above the weight you have the up trace, if it goes up there, it doesn't matter where that pike bites, it's always going to be a safe rig. Okay, and that's really, really important. And one of the most important things about an up trace is to make sure it's actually longer than your trace, because otherwise it defeats the object jet because this can still go and catch around your main line. Okay, so that's using an up trace. So that makes it a super, super safe rig. These are the Fox drop off uh, weights here as well. So it's got a slot down the side so you can easily put them on. The rubber's pushing over that swivel there. And if this did get the worst happened and it broke, then this can actually come away off here. And then actually it can also rubber come off and it can come out of that slot there as well. So it means that it, the fish can potentially lose that weight as well. So that makes a safe rig. And then when we go further up the line uh, or up the up trace, that's when we've got our float and we've got the uh, bead and then we've got the float stop. And then that goes to, I mean, really strong braid. This is 55 pound. Um, and, and my other rod there, which I use on the rivers a bit more, that's got 80 pound braid on. So really powerful braid, which if you're kind of new to this style of fishing and you do a lot of carp fishing, you might use 15 pound line, 12 pound line, that type of thing. You might think, wow, I mean, is he shark fishing? Why is he using such powerful braid? And it's not because I'm trying to catch a 50 pound pike. It would be a British record. It's not about that at all. It's about fishing really, really safe. So it's making sure that with such, such strong tackle, you can straighten your hooks back and you can pull them back if they get snagged up. Um, and, and it's about that. It's about making sure your tackle is absolutely bulletproof. And that's what the strong braid and the uptrace does. It keeps it all nice and safe. So, coming to the end of the day now, we're losing the light a little bit to be able to film, but fish on a little bit longer because now's a good time, you know, with the light levels dropping, so see what happens. But um, probably that's a wrap for us today. We've had a couple of fish, talked about the, uh, the, the different uses of the spray, um, how and when I'd used them, about the roving tactic as well and, uh, and moving about. And at this time of year, everybody likes to move around and keep warm as well. We did come into this bay because again we saw a grebe working and um, there's lots of reeds which the small fish like to get into and um, I did get a pick up and, and there's a lost fish there which I don't know if you can see but it's all bitten up and, but that's just fishing you can't hook them all you can't get them all in so it's part of the chase but um, yeah I hope you can see that using the mobile tactics coming to a venue you've never even seen before and gaining those little percentages everything from the mobility the bait choice um, the additives to the bait if you add it all together you're just a percent here a percent there a percent there and hopefully that just edges you towards catching a few more fish next time you're on the bank <laughs>